Things couldn't be worse for Diddy at the moment, because right after he was arrested and jailed on numerous charges a few days ago, some of his victims have come forward with their own accusations against him. Apparently, the man who was once one of the biggest rappers in history was also one of the most violent men in hip-hop behind the scenes. These victims have revealed shocking details of the assaults and atrocities they suffered at Diddy's hands, and I dare say that the things these victims revealed will leave you stunned. Three women speak. Our story begins in the vibrant city of Tokyo, at the famous strip club Seventh Heaven. It was the early 2000s, and Diddy was at the peak of his fame. Known for his extravagant lifestyle and outlandish personality, Diddy was a regular at luxury clubs around the world. One fateful night, Diddy, accompanied by a group of about 25 people, made his grand entrance into the Seventh Heaven Club. Among the dancers that night was Rachel Kennedy, a topless dancer who had no idea that her life was about to change forever. Rachel remembers how Diddy, with his charismatic charm, struck up a conversation with her. They started drinking and talking, and it seemed like they hit it off. We got along well. We were talking and he invited me and my friends to a party at his hotel. I brought the girls and we went to Diddy's hotel. Excited and unaware of what awaited them, Rachel and her friends left the club and headed to Diddy's hotel. They expected a lively party, but what awaited them was far from what they had imagined. We all knew at that point it was going to turn into a one-person party. Few knew that this was only the beginning of a night that would haunt Rachel for years. When Rachel and her friends entered Diddy's hotel room, the atmosphere quickly changed. What they thought would be a lively party turned into an intimate and unsettling encounter. Diddy began showing them videos of his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez. The strange display left Rachel and her friends uncomfortable and confused. He started showing us music videos of Hollow one after another. It was really weird. We were in his hotel room and he was showing us videos of his girlfriend to see. The night took a darker turn when Diddy invited Rachel and one of her friends to his bedroom, leaving the other friend in the living room. What followed was a very charged sexual encounter. We went to his bedroom and started performing oral sex. We were all in his bed. When we finished, he was still naked and his head of security came in. Diddy's head of security burst into the room with such force that it left Rachel and her friend terrified. The aggressive behaviour of the bodyguard made it clear they were not welcome. His bodyguard was trying to kick us out. Rachel and her friend tried to leave as quickly as possible, but the bodyguard's aggressive behaviour made their escape harrowing. He didn't say a word to them. He was calmly putting on his clothes while the bodyguard tried to push them out the door. They broke free from him and ran down the hallway. It felt like they were running for their lives. Eventually, they made it to the elevator and got out of there. Rachel's ordeal didn't end there. She called Diddy to ask why his bodyguard had been so violent, but he hung up on her. The experience left her shocked and confused. Rachel's encounter with Diddy was just the beginning of a series of events that would later be revealed as part of his so-called freak-offs, highly sexual performances that have landed him in serious legal trouble. The second woman to accuse Diddy was Talia Graves. Talia Graves, a name that has recently come to the forefront of a deeply disturbing story, was once a familiar face in the music industry circles. Graves' relationship with Diddy began in late 1999 through her then-boyfriend, a Bad Boy Records executive. This relationship placed her in close proximity to Diddy, allowing her to attend numerous events hosted at his homes and frequently visit her boyfriend at work. Graves' presence at these high-level gatherings was not unusual. She was often seen mingling with industry elites, enjoying the glamorous lifestyle that came with her boyfriend's position. In mid-2000, Graves received a direct call from Diddy, requesting a meeting to discuss her boyfriend's supposed performance issues. Eager to help her boyfriend and already knowing Diddy, Graves agreed to the meeting. Diddy arrived at her residence in an SUV driven by his bodyguard, Joseph Big Joe Sherman. Graves accepted a glass of wine from Diddy, but soon after, she began to feel dizzy and physically weak. By the time they arrived at the recording studio, Graves was struggling to walk. Upon reaching Diddy's office, she lost consciousness. Later, Graves realised that Diddy had likely drugged her drink, 
as a few sips of wine had never affected her in that way. When Graves regained consciousness, she found herself naked and bound, with her hands tied behind her back with what seemed to be a plastic grocery bag. When she screamed for help, Sherman allegedly slammed her face into a pool table. Shortly after, Diddy entered the room naked, bent Graves over the table and anally penetrated her without her consent. Graves was unable to move, completely overpowered physically in addition to being drugged and bound. Graves screamed in pain, but Diddy ignored her and continued the violent assault, slamming her head into the pool table when she tried to escape. Graves lost consciousness again, and when she woke up, Sherman allegedly slapped her several times and forced her to perform oral sex on him. Some time later, Graves woke up naked and alone on a couch, in intense pain, feeling a burning sensation in her vagina and anus, and with bruises on her face and wrists. Still dizzy and weak, she called a chauffeur her family regularly hired, who knew her well. Graves was dishevelled, crying uncontrollably, and in agonising pain. Upon arriving at the hospital, the driver tried to convince her to report the rape and get tested. However, Graves was unable to get out of the car, shaking and crying hysterically. The fear of what Diddy might do to her and her family if she reported him was overwhelming. Eventually, Graves informed her, then boyfriend, of the horrific events that had taken place. Instead of offering support, her boyfriend discouraged her from going to the police, allegedly telling her it could negatively affect his own career. This response left Graves feeling even more isolated and helpless. In the years that followed, Graves moved several times trying to escape the trauma and the threats she says she received from Diddy and Sherman, warning her to stay silent about the assault. Despite the fear and intimidation, Graves confided in close friends about what had happened, seeking some support and understanding. The psychological aftermath of the assault was immense. Graves suffered from PTSD, severe depression, suicidal thoughts and intrusive thoughts. She even attempted to take her own life, tormented by the constant fear and trauma inflicted on her. Years later, with the support of her attorney, Gloria Alred, Graves found the strength to come forward and seek justice. The third woman to accuse Diddy is April Lampros. Lampros quickly found herself amid the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, appearing in several high-profile fashion campaigns and landing small roles in TV shows and movies. As her career progressed, Lampros became a familiar face at exclusive industry events and parties. It was at one of those events, in 2025, that her life took a dramatic and traumatic turn. The event, hosted by a well-known entertainment mogul, was attended by the cream of Hollywood's crop, including Diddy. As the night wore on, she noticed Diddy watching her from across the room. At first, she didn't think much of it, attributing his gaze to mere curiosity or admiration. However, as the night progressed, Diddy approached Lampras with a charm that quickly turned unsettling. He complimented her beauty and talent, making her feel both flattered and uncomfortable. Aware of Diddy's reputation and influence, Lampros tried to remain polite and professional. She had no idea that this seemingly innocent interaction would soon turn into a nightmare. Diddy suggested they move to a quieter area to discuss potential collaboration opportunities. Eager to advance her career, Lampros agreed, hoping this could be a significant breakthrough. They moved to a private room, away from the prying eyes of the party's guests. Once inside, the atmosphere shifted dramatically. Diddy's behaviour went from charming to aggressive, and Lampros found herself in a situation that quickly spiralled out of control. According to Lampros, Diddy began making unwanted advances, ignoring her pleas to stop. His behaviour became increasingly erratic, and in a fit of rage, he allegedly hit her, leaving her bruised and terrified. Lampro managed to escape the room and sought help from a close friend who was also at the party. The friend, who wishes to remain anonymous, corroborates Lampro's account, stating that she found her in a state of distress with visible marks on her body. The incident left Lampros traumatised and fearful of the repercussions of reporting such a powerful figure. She chose to stay silent, bury the painful memory and try to move on with her life. However, the emotional and psychological scars remained and deeply affected her career and personal life. Lampros's decision to come forward years later was driven by the bravery of other survivors in the Hashmi Too movement. 
these women have come forward to expose Diddy as their victimizer over the years. However, Diddy didn't just have female victims, he had male victims as well. In February 2024, a man named Rodney Jones, also known as Lil Rod, shocked the world by filing a 100-page lawsuit detailing numerous alleged crimes committed by Diddy, including grooming, sex trafficking, and other serious accusations involving high-profile celebrities and members of Diddy's close circle. According to the lawsuit, Rod is a musical prodigy whose talent has been used to produce and create music for some of the biggest names in the industry. He claims he met Diddy in August 2022 after receiving a call from him asking for collaboration on Diddy's highly anticipated album titled The Love Album – Off The Grid. This would be a dream come true for any up-and-coming producer. Receiving a call from one of the biggest names in music to be part of his first album in nearly 20 years would sound like an incredible opportunity. However, according to Rod, this dream soon turned into a nightmare. The lawsuit states that from September 2022 to November 2023, Rod worked on and helped produce nine songs for the album. That might not seem like a long time since we know albums can take years to finish. But what's strange is that Diddy allegedly demanded that Rod live with him for the entire duration of that time. That's right, for over a year, Rod spent months living with Diddy while working on the album. Rod says he missed birthdays, holidays and important family events during that time. Sadly, missing out on his personal life was the least of Rod's concerns, as the lawsuit claims that he witnessed and endured things far beyond what would be expected from any producer. Things like sexual abuse, drug use and distribution, supplying minors with spiked alcoholic drinks and many more severe crimes. What's even more shocking is that Diddy is not the only person named in the lawsuit. High-profile individuals such as actor Cuba Gooding Jr., the Oscar-winning actor known for roles in films like Boys in the Hood, are also implicated. The lawsuit claims that Diddy encouraged Rod to engage in homosexual acts with Cuba and even groped and sexually assaulted him. Cuba, who has faced multiple accusations related to inappropriate sexual conduct, broke his silence on this, calling the case ridiculous and claiming he barely knows Diddy. However, the lawsuit includes photos that seem to show Cuba getting intimate with Lil Rod. It's hard to deny that the person in the photo looks a lot like Cuba Gooding Jr. And with his hands on Rod, the accusations of sexual assault may not seem as ridiculous after all. Aside from Cuba, there's a whole list of names implicated in Rod's lawsuit. As mentioned before, one is world-renowned pastor Bishop T.D. Jakes, who Diddy is said to have used to soften the blow of the Cassie Ventura case on his public image. While this doesn't imply that T.D. Jakes is guilty of any crime, many are questioning why he was so closely linked to Diddy and his wild parties, which have been notorious for years. In 2022, a video went viral on Facebook showing T.D. Jakes at Diddy's 53rd birthday party. Even without the alleged criminal activity, Diddy's parties have always been known to be quite sinful affairs, so what was a pastor doing there? In defence of the pastor, a spokesperson said Jake's only stopped by the party after a brief visit since he was in town. A significant aspect of many of the lawsuits against Diddy is the elaborate sexual nature of Diddy's parties and the so-called freak-offs that took place there, often involving homosexual acts. Many believe it's wholly inappropriate for a pastor to attend one of Diddy's parties, and they're not wrong. We may never know for sure what happened at Diddy's 53rd birthday party concerning T.D. Jakes, but Diddy's former bodyguard Jean Deal, who attended many of these parties, has some things to say about it. He says that in the past, sexual craziness happened behind closed doors, but nowadays it happens in the open, suggesting that the bishop definitely would have seen some sinful behaviour. Cuba Gooding Jr and T.D. Jakes are among the long list of names mentioned in Rod's lawsuit, but some names have been redacted, sparking public curiosity. Since Rod's lawsuit in February, rapper Meek Mill's name has constantly been mentioned as people believe he's one of the redacted names. Since Diddy's arrest, a viral leaked audio recording has been circulating, with people claiming it's of Diddy having sex with Meek. Meek Mill has denied both previous and recent allegations, stating, the two things they say are either we're snitches or we're gay. 
we make hundreds of millions with music. It's no coincidence that they say we're all gay and snitches. Rod's case brings to light cases of blackmail, allegedly revealing that Diddy has recordings of many celebrities engaging in bizarre sexual acts. As lawsuits progress, more details are expected to emerge. Lil Rod made another accusation, this time involving Diddy and another celebrity, Young Miami. The allegations made by Rodney Lil Rod Jones against Young Miami's cousin are nothing short of shocking. According to the lawsuit filed by Lil Rod, the events of November 23, 2022 unfolded in a way that left him traumatised and seeking justice. The atmosphere was typical of many high-level recording sessions, with loud music, people mingling and substances being passed around. Diddy, who was reportedly drunk, offered cocaine to Lil Rod, which he refused. Feeling uncomfortable, Lil Rod decided to take a break and headed to the bathroom. What happened next is the core of Lil Rod's accusations. While he was in the bathroom, young Miami's cousin, who was apparently her assistant, barged in. According to the lawsuit, she began groping Lil Rod without his consent. Lil Rod believes that Diddy sent her in there to sexually assault him, a claim that adds a layer of conspiracy to an already disturbing incident. The documents detail how young Miami's cousin allegedly knelt down and began performing oral sex on Lil Rod's exposed penis. Shocked and horrified, Lil Rod pushed her away and tried to leave the bathroom. However, the nightmare didn't end there. The lawsuit claims that young Miami's cousin didn't take his rejection and followed him out of the bathroom. In a brazen and disturbing display, she began undressing and attempted to straddle Lil Rod, trying to have sex with him in the presence of Diddy and his staff. Once again, Lil Rod pushed her away and managed to escape the situation. The documents describe a chaotic and predatory environment where boundaries were ignored, leaving Lil Rod feeling violated and helpless. One thing to note is that Diddy didn't just assault strangers or people who weren't close to him, as has been seen so far. He also assaulted those close to him, including his ex-girlfriends. We begin with Cassie. Cassie Ventura, better known simply as Cassie, burst onto the music scene in the mid-2000s with her hit single Me and You. Her sultry voice and striking looks quickly caught the attention of Diddy, the influential head of Bad Boy Records. In 2005, at just 19 years old, Cassie signed with Diddy's label, marking the beginning of what seemed to be a promising career. However, behind the scenes, a much darker story was unfolding. According to the lawsuit filed by Cassie in November 2023, Diddy's interest in her soon shifted from professional to personal. The lawsuit claims that Diddy began controlling every aspect of Cassie's life, from her living arrangements to her medical history. What started as a seemingly protective relationship soon turned into a nightmare of manipulation and abuse. The lawsuit details a horrific pattern of abuse that spanned over a decade. Cassie accuses Diddy of rape, assault and forcing her to engage in sexual acts with sex workers. She describes a life under constant surveillance and control, where Diddy's intimidating tactics kept her in a state of fear. The lawsuit states that Diddy's controlling behaviour began almost immediately after she signed with Bad Boy Records in 2006 and intensified as their relationship progressed. One of the most shocking accusations relates to an incident in 2009, where Diddy allegedly kicked Cassie repeatedly in the face, causing her to bleed. His staff supposedly hid her in a hotel room to cover up the abuse. The lawsuit also claims that Diddy forced Cassie to participate in freak-offs, where she had to engage in sexual acts with male sex workers while he watched and filmed the encounters. These disturbing acts took place in luxury hotels across the country, often leaving Cassie trapped and powerless. The emotional and psychological toll on Cassie was immense. The lawsuit reveals that she suffered memory loss due to excessive substance use and had suicidal thoughts during her relationship with Diddy. MRI results, which should have been private, were sent directly to Diddy, further illustrating the invasive control he had over her life. After enduring over a decade of abuse, Cassie finally decided to stand up for herself. With the impending expiration of New York's Adult Survivors Act, she saw an opportunity to speak out about the trauma she endured. On November 16, 2023, Cassie filed a lawsuit against Diddy, 
seeking justice and accountability for the years of suffering she experienced. Shortly after the lawsuit was filed, Diddy and Cassie reached a settlement. However, the story doesn't end there. Images of Diddy and Cassie in a hotel lobby leaked online. In the weeks leading up to the incident, Diddy and Cassie were reportedly experiencing significant tension in their relationship. Sources close to the couple revealed that they had been arguing frequently, with disagreements ranging from personal issues to professional matters. Despite their tumultuous history, this period seemed especially tense, with both parties visibly stressed. The night before the incident, Diddy and Cassie attended a high-profile event in Los Angeles. The event, attended by numerous celebrities, was supposed to be a glamorous affair. However, eyewitnesses reported that Diddy and Cassie appeared distant and tense throughout the evening. They were seen having a heated conversation in a secluded corner, with Diddy gesticulating animatedly while Cassie seemed visibly upset. After the event, the couple returned to the hotel, where the argument continued. Hotel staff later recounted hearing raised voices coming from their suite, but no one intervened. Assuming it was a private matter, the tension between Diddy and Cassie seemed to escalate overnight, setting the stage for the confrontation that would soon unfold. The day of the incident, Diddy and Cassie were scheduled to attend a business meeting in the hotel lobby. The meeting was intended to discuss upcoming projects and collaborations, but the couple's personal issues overshadowed the professional agenda. As they made their way to the lobby, witnesses observed that they were still arguing, with Diddy appearing increasingly agitated. Security footage, which later leaked online, captured the moment when the argument reached its breaking point. In the video, Diddy can be seen confronting Cassie near the lobby entrance. The argument quickly escalates, with Diddy raising his voice and gesturing aggressively. Cassie, visibly distressed, attempts to walk away, but Diddy grabs her by the arm and pulls her back. The situation quickly spirals out of control and Diddy shoves Cassie against the wall. The force of the shove causes Cassie to stumble, appearing momentarily disoriented. He then drags her across the floor. Hotel guests and staff present in the lobby react with shock and concern. Some attempt to intervene, but the intensity of the confrontation leaves them unsure of how to proceed. Another ex-girlfriend of Diddy who came forward with her experiences of his atrocities was the late Kim Porter. Kim wrote and published a book that was essentially her diary, detailing the physical and sexual assault she suffered at Diddy's hands. The diary entries recount instances of emotional and physical abuse that Kim allegedly endured during her time with Diddy. She writes about feeling isolated, manipulated and controlled, describing a relationship filled with pain and fear. These revelations starkly contrast with the glamorous public image of the couple that the world had been accustomed to seeing. One of the most heartbreaking aspects of Kim's memoir is her account of the physical abuse she allegedly suffered. She describes incidents where Diddy became violent, leaving her bruised and terrified. The fear and helplessness she felt in those moments are palpable in her writings, offering a chilling glimpse into the darker side of their relationship. The emotional abuse was equally devastating. Kim recounts how Diddy belittled her, making her feel worthless and insignificant. His words cut deep, leaving invisible scars that the outside world could not see. The diary entries reveal a woman struggling to maintain her self-worth in the face of relentless criticism and manipulation. In the memoir, Kim also recounts how Diddy allegedly abused Porter and even threatened to kill her. In the book, Porter tells how she discovered and copied tapes of Diddy having sex with young boys he had groomed, including an alleged tape involving a famous pop star who was 18 at the time and went on to become a household name. In her final recording, Porter fell ill, sent a text to her friend saying, he caught me, and called 911. Although some of Diddy's children have come forward to dispute the allegations in the book, it doesn't change the fact that Diddy has done many terrible things to people in the past and that the law has finally caught up with him. If you like this video, click on any of the cards appearing on your screen.